live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2017. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are live here in Las Vegas for VMworld 2017. We are on the floor. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE with Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Juan Vega, Director, Ready Solutions Product Manager for Dell EMC. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, for my first time. Really looking forward to okay, it. Okay, first, first, what's Ready Solutions mean? So Ready Solutions are uh, uh, literally a bunch of services that we apply to infrastructure to help build confidence, convenience, and a better customer experience for folks who are consuming a do-it-yourself, um, who want to take a do-it-yourself approach to uh, converged systems or or SDDS. Hmm? So I got the, the button that says Node-O-Rama. What is that Node-O-Rama. Well, we're, we're launching a bunch of nodes this year, right? We have uh, a lot of nodes that we're, that we're putting out there um, for a variety of workloads, including vSAN, right? And uh, with vSAN, we're introducing 14G um, technologies, this, you know, this, this show. We just launched it recently. And uh, we're bringing lots of new performance technologies uh, in that in that 14G space. It'll help a bunch with uh, with software-defined storage. No, 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 no. John's like, likes developer. He thought it was Node.js or something. <laughs> He's getting excited. <laughs> but, uh, so, Juan, I wonder if you could talk to something that we've been addressing all week here on the Cube. You see in VMware's results a lot of momentum, and it's not just doesn't look like it's a one quarter. I mean, three quarters of growth appears to be some momentum. The AWS deal sort of clarified for customers the cloud strategy, uh, and I think the other piece that we've been talking about is the reality that customers have that they're not able to reform their business and stick it in the cloud. Right. They're really trying to take the cloud model and bring it to their data. And in order to do that, they need simplification. Yep. So, first of all, do you buy that and what are you guys doing to facilitate that? I absolutely buy it. I mean, if I look at Dell EMC's capabilities across the spectrum, Right, there's a broad variety of services that we can offer a customer to help them adopt that technology, right? We would call it sort of absorbing their tech debt, as it were. And we can do that from very basic do-it-yourself hardware infrastructure, right, all the way up through, you talked to Colin earlier today, and we talked about VxRail and VxRack, where we're actually providing um, sort of lifecycle management for those environments. Well, ready nodes and ready bundles sit between those two. There's a little bit more service, a little bit more confidence, a little bit more convenience, a little faster time to value, right, on that infrastructure without really moving the customer to a, uh, an environment where we manage it for them. Okay, and so why do you need to do that? You know, I thought VMware was so simple, push a button and go. <laughs> Talk about it, sort of how you're closing that gap. It, it can be simple, and once you're in the virtualization layer, it absolutely is simple, but there's a relationship between the virtualization layer and the hardware that has to be maintained. So why is there an HCL, right? Why, is, why do we have that? Because there's a known relationship between that software and that hardware that enables that virtualization. We're making that easier and easier for customers all the time. And, and, and virtualization does not equate to cloud. Of course. And so, how do you look at cloud? You know, how do you sort of, I don't want to get into what, what do you define as cloud, but at what point do customers say, yes, this is a viable alternative for me to attack my IT labor problem, to, for me to uh, uh, tick the box with my management that sure. I'm you know, cutting cost, you know, et cetera. Those, what are those attributes that you are driving toward that you see customers demanding today? Well, I see that space evolving. Right, and the part that we're focusing on with ReadyNodes is really focused on that software-defined storage component. So as that piece of the, of the puzzle evolves, right, we're trying to remove complexity in that environment, right? Go back to that ability to confidently present you with a hardware solution that is absolutely adapted for that software environment. Make it faster time to value so that it's showing up pre-configured with services that help you enable that environment more quickly, right? Mm -hmm. And then should something need to be done, um, you know, down, downstream, uh, say a drive fails or whatever, right? We can provide a better support experience by contextualizing that hardware in that environment. So it's a, it's a space for customers who are still very much doing it themselves, very much building their own environment, right? In the software defined storage space. Yep. But we're providing a set of services that increase that confidence for them, right? Make it more convenient, give them a better experience. It's interesting, you know, this is our eighth VMworld. Dave and I have been here since 2010. It's been a great run. 
Thank you everyone for watching theCUBE. We love, love, love coming every year. But it's been interesting watching the journey. Software Defined Data Center, the hype was what, five years ago? Yeah, Maybe hey. four years ago. Sure. Um, but now it's reality. NSX is Absolutely. in there, Crown Jewel, Crowd Native coming over the top. vSAN has been like this rising star. Exactly. Server SAN from Wikibon has crushed it on the research side. But I got to ask you, now we're hearing uh, customers deploy new use cases under digital transformation that merge software stacks with, with hardware stacks. Yep. What is the biggest challenge that customers have? Because they want more vSAN. Yes. How are you guys helping customers get more vSAN and what are some of the key challenges that you guys solve? Well, I think there's a couple of things that we're doing. First of all, we're enabling a very broad set of hardware, including cutting edge technologies that are helping them improve the performance, improve the reliability of their implementations in this space. So today we're looking at uh, six different hardware platforms um, with about 15 different configurations on the HCL, and we're expanding that this month significantly. All of those can be delivered. On the hardware side? On the hardware side. Okay, got it. All of those can be delivered in a way that they fit seamlessly into a data center environment that's, that's deploying software-defined storage. So I think helping them simplify that is really how we're trying to make this more of a reality. And Dell has always brought strong operationalization to any customer that we worked with. So I got to ask you, on the software side, again, software's yeah. eating the world, uh, Wikibon's true private cloud report really validating a lot of the success that vSAN's having. Sure. I mean, all the actions on premise, transforming the cloud operating model, which is to be more agile. Yeah. What is the key software piece of it? Because now you got DevOps, the cloud native side, saying, hey, sure. infrastructure as code, I want you to run invisible. The ops guy's saying, wait a minute, we got hardware stacks, you got software stacks, they got to come together. Absolutely, so um, our open manage uh, enterprise solution is our software uh, connection for helping manage that hardware in the vSAN vCenter environment. And it allows them to actually move all of the controls for updating and managing that system into one pane of glass, which is their vSAN vCenter pane of glass. And so we're really trying to help drive that automation, enable that capability for the do-it-yourself customer. Now if the customer wants to have significantly less tech debt, then we're happy to talk to them about VxRail and VxRack where we start adding more management software capabilities to help drive an even better One experience. more thing, you mentioned tech debt, because I want to get that on the table. Real issue is technology debt, meaning trying to move faster, take some shortcuts, or you know, move, <laughs> move the needle too fast. What are some of the technical debts that customers are getting into, and where's, what's good technical debt and what's bad technical debt? Mm. Oh, that's, that's a tough question. Um, I think that in terms of, uh, of good, of the bad technical debt, let's start there, right? Um, anything that is going to be sort of routine, spread across lots of different customers within a base that could be off, offloaded to um, a service provider who can provide that sort of scale is bad technical debt. So things like driver updates, managing your HCL, paying attention to how to go about replacing a hard drive in a, in a um, server that's gone down in a node, Right, those are sort of bad technical debt. You shouldn't be wasting your resources that are focused on your business outcomes on that sort of technical debt. And even at our most basic level, the, the ready node, we're starting to provide that level of service to the customer. Um, and I think we advance that even more as we get into our rails and, and racks. Um, in terms of good technical debt, yet to be determined, but I would suspect that a lot of that has to do with developing the code. That you can pay back. Right, that you can pay <laughs> back. <laughs> As I tell Dave, yeah, we exactly. don't want to take on too much debt and then can't pay it back, you'll right. be bankrupt. And that's, that's the sort of code that's directly tied to your, to your environment, right? So, for example, all of the uh, AI infrastructure that they were building in the, in the keynote today for the uh, pizza company, right? That's a good example of I'm developing code that's intellectual property for my business. That's good technical debt. I'm going to pay that off. It gives me a competitive yeah. advantage. Yeah, that you could use to pay off the, 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 yeah. the, the investments that you've made. Um, so you, well, you, 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 you're a disruptor of sense. I mean, you've got, John talked about the server SAN. We, it's something we published years ago. And basically, you're disrupting an install base that you guys own, um, right? I sounds, mean, sounds like a story I heard a long time ago when virtualization first came on the scene. Oh, we're going to be running out of servers. That didn't happen. We're selling more servers than we ever have. Oh, so yeah, right. not that you'll stop selling, but but you, you you've got this massive install base. Sure. And you're essentially, where appropriate, migrating that install base to yes. a new way. Of course. I wonder if you could talk about that dynamic and what those customer conversations are like. Well, I think it's important to us to be a trusted advisor to our customers. Um, it's always been Dell's sort of way of doing business, right? We roll up our sleeves and we get to work with you. 
So as this transition is applying, is, is um, happening to the, to the industry, I think it's up to us to provide those kind of you know, feet on the street services that make it easier for customers to absorb and deal with that transition, right? And again, I know I sound like the broken record here, but it's about helping them have confidence that as they move into this transition, they're not having to deal with all the vagaries of mismatched hardware and software incompatibilities. It's about being able to get faster time to value because we did some of the basic steps like pre-configuring that system, so it's just ready to go, mm -hmm. right? And, and what about workloads? How do you see those evolving? So, that's, so one piece is simplification and, and I, you know, attacking the, the IT labor problem with non-differentiated patching and other stuff, the bad technical debt sure. you guys were talking about. What about workloads? What are you seeing emerge in terms of the types of workloads that have an affinity to these types of, of systems? Well, I think you know, we heard Chad talk earlier about um, how the, the network was becoming sort of the bottleneck, yep. right? Um, and I think that we're seeing more and more storage uh, workloads with, a st with affinity for storage moving into the cloud space, right, into the converged space as that technology begins to evolve. And we're seeing things like the new NVMe drives in our 14G servers. Right, we have 6x the capacity that we had uh, before, which means applications, workloads that have a storage affinity are, are able to actually start moving into this more I know you don't want to use the word virtualized, but this, this is more software-defined um, space. Right. All right, bottom line for customers, ReadyNode, you guys are doing some good stuff, vSAN's hot. Um, Gelsinger said, the world's going to get much faster, today's the slowest day of your life going forward, or something along those lines, sure. basically implying that it's going to get pretty crazy. Peter Burris, head of research for Wikibomb.com said, the whole computer industry's been turned upside down, it's going to be landing on the table, and it's going to resort itself out. When you deal with customers, how, what, what's that conversation like? Because they're scrambling to lock down their true private cloud on-premise. On, on they see hybrid cloud as that, that pathway to multi-cloud. Sure. That's their end state, but right now they got to take care of business, business at home. That's like clean up their own house in IT. What are those, some of those conversations when this, that kind of disruption, chaos, complexity? Sure. I think everyone's looking for a little bit more of that confidence, right, in the whole relationship with their, with their supply chain. Um, we're doing it, our customers are doing it, and every time we have that conversation with them, it basically boils down to, what can you do for me that is going to make it easier for me to deal with this transition? How can I trust that so what ease I've, of use the, is a big thing. I'm sorry? Ease of use, um, pretty big not deal. Not just ease of use, but trust that I'll be supported downstream, okay. right? So a ready node builds that, for example, right, into its value proposition. We want to make sure that you understand that downstream, we know what you're using it for, and we're able to help you in that context. And that, that's a, a real key example of how I think we help build that trust with our customers. Michael Dell, final question for you, talked about, just really, final question for you is that Michael Dell was mentioning technology synergies between Dell Technologies across the portfolio, including sure. VMware. Sure. So the question for you is, what are some of the synergies that you guys are getting with VMware? Um, How's that put into motion? Sure, uh, there are several actually. Um, we've done a lot of our uh, development work in the VxRail space around management um, in conjunction with, with VMware. I think that the, uh, the evolution of the, of the software defined space is being, is being driven by them and we're happy to participate in it in every way we can. So I think there's a lot of, um, a lot of uh, development and tech support opportunities that we're, we're finding in that relationship. It's a positive outcomes. You guys are having a good time. Certainly VMware's doing great. Good to see Pat Gelsinger uh, on the upslope in terms of stock prices up <laughs> over 104 as of sure. yesterday. I don't even check what it was today, but certainly clarity on, in the community, clarity in the ecosystem, clarity in the product, cloud and IoT edge. I mean, the, the wave slide is pretty much baked at this point. Yep. And, and I'm, I'm excited to see Dell EMC having a presence across that yeah. whole breadth. Yeah. Dave was commenting, it seems like that with the new Dell Technologies is much more sanity now in the community, it's all sorted out, looking good, congratulations. Thank you, thank you very much. Juan Vega, Director, Ready Solutions with Dell EMC, he's from Jones Product Management, he's the product czar, thanks for spending the time. It's theCUBE coverage live here at VMworld 2017, day two of three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We'll be right back with more after this short break.